probably not a wrong decision. Uh, it's more what what suits the the needs of others. Some guys have graduated and it's on to the next step. Other guys maybe are close to graduation, and uh, I think it's time for them to make that leap. Um, but we certainly support those guys. I'm looking forward to seeing those guys uh, work out and train, and we're fired up about the guys that decided to return. Kirby, I guess just as a sort of direct follow on that, we know about Devonte and Justin coming back for the extra year. Uh, guys, I was wondering about Demetrius Robertson, um, Walter Grant, uh, maybe even a Julian Rochester. Do you know their plans? Yeah, I know most of those guys' plans, and there some of them are working out with us, and some of them uh, aren't. But to be honest with you, we're worried about the guys that are working, and I don't have to get into specifics about those guys. Uh, some guys may not even made their minds up yet uh, in terms of that, but most of them have, and uh, it'll play out over the next uh, several weeks in spring practice as it starts to come to fruition. All right, let's go to Mike Griffith and then Chip Towers. Uh, yeah, Kirby. Um, just, I guess, you know, the, the, I guess the signing class, some of the ink's dry. Can, can you just address uh, where the needs are at now? I, I heard in a Rivals interview a little earlier today, you talked about the portal being more for uh, addressing needs. Where are you guys at right now? And, and how do you manage the roster with, with these? looks like a double freshman class now that they that, that frozen eligibility this past season. Yeah, I'm very pleased. You know, I, I look at it as total claw. This is not really a signing day Zoom because we our signing class was pretty much done in, in December. And I think that's the way it's uh, moving forward to, especially with COVID. In terms of COVID, the class is done. So um, it's kind of anticlimactic to talk about the signing class because I think that we've kind of been focused on them uh, since they arrived. Uh, so many of them were here mid-year and so many of them were able to practice with us or uh, – come and enroll in school and begin workouts with us. So I'm excited about those guys. And uh, it was an interesting class because, you know, sometimes the, the first time you saw some of the guys are when they were walking in uh, for school or walking in for, for bowl practice because you didn't get the uh, official visit time with those guys. So I'm excited about those guys coming into work and uh, they, they're a really good academic group. And we thought it was a good class uh, all in all. Kirby, obviously, uh, Will Muschamp has been spending a lot of time at the facility with you guys and maybe visiting Jackson as well. It's, it, obviously, he's relocated to this area. Is he going to join your staff in any kind of official capacity, or is he maybe helping out as a consultant, or, or what can you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, as of last week, um, we were able to get things uh, completed uh, with Will. He'll be joining our, our staff in a uh, off-the-field role. We call it an analyst, and um, – He's already uh, made a lot of strides in terms of helping me, helping our staff. He'll be able to help coach the coaches, and um, he'll be working with the defensive side of the ball. But um, very, very valuable to have a guy that's been a head coach at two places in our conference. Uh, he knows the ins and outs of this conference. Uh, he'll be able to help uh, our staff, our coaches, um, in a lot of ways. And I'm excited to be able to uh, have him join us. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to Mark Weiser and then Charles Odom. Sorry, I had to unzoom there, Kirby. I um, wonder if you could um, kind of update us on, on maybe some uh, postseason surgeries and, and maybe availability as far as you know for spring. Guys like uh, N'Kobe Dean, Micah Morris, MJ Sherman, anyone else you want to share? Uh, yeah, those guys had some postseason work done. Um, each one will be individually based on whether they're ready for spring. Uh, based on the recovery and the time it takes to recover. So uh, I don't know if Nicobe will be able to go through spring or not. He'll certainly be able to do a lot of things, um, but he may not be full contact. Uh, the guys that had uh, labor repairs most of the time won't make it through spring in terms of contact. Um, so you're talking about MJ, uh, Micah, and um, Nicobe, you're talking about uh, labor. Okay, thank you. To follow up on, on um, you making it official with Will Muschamp, did he express to you interest in eventually returning to an on-field role? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that anytime you're an aspiring coach, you want to get uh, on the field and get an opportunity to go coach on the grass. I know he's not through his coaching days. That's really important for him to be able to get out there and have the relationships and uh, go develop a position group and uh, coach. So I know that's important to him. and. Uh, his family's been his focus here recently because I know he feels like 
he's moved his family all over the country and this is an opportunity for him to to give back to them and be with them and um and be able to watch his son play all right, let's go to dean leggy and then brandon sedge Herbie, I apologize for going backwards on the recruiting question, but it was something that I did want to ask. In this in this uh, world of uh, recruiting, how are y'all? How do you know when a, a young man is committed to y'all? And back in the day, it was usually phone call or you'd see stuff. Has it been different? How are y'all getting that communication from the prospects? As far as uh, verbal commitment, that's right. I should have said that. Uh, it's no different than it's ever been, right? They can. They can text you. They can call you. They can Zoom. Um, I mean, they didn't always do it in person. As a matter of fact, most of the commitments I've ever received were uh, not face-to-face. -face. Uh, most of the commitments I ever received occurred after a kid came and visited. You know, he wanted to go home and sleep it off and spend time with his family and check in with his coach. And whenever he felt comfortable making a verbal commitment, they did it you know, by calling you and letting you know, um, or maybe letting the position coach know, and then the position coach referred them to the head coach. Um, but that, that hasn't, that really hasn't changed. I think that's what you're asking. The, 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 the matter, how they go about committing has not really changed. The entire recruiting process has changed because we don't get much, uh, really any face-to-face -face, uh, interaction. Hey, uh, Kirby, I guess I'll tie this back into the whole, um, signing day thing, but since you guys have gotten all those early enrollees on campus, I don't know if you've been able to be around them much at all, but um, can you share if you've seen anything from them um, and what that process has been like um, with getting them on campus early and and having as many of those guys as you did have them here already? You mean, do you want me to create an unrealistic expectation for them? Is that what you want me to do? And uh, I mean, I've got to be around them a little bit. Yeah, I've got to see them uh, work out and lift in the weight room. But um, the guys we got to see practice briefly, I think we got maybe three or four. We talked about this before, maybe three or four practices in with those guys before we had to go to uh, Atlanta for the bowl. So, no, I'm not ready to put any uh, – stamps on anybody or any unrealistic expectations on anybody because I know that's what a lot of people want to talk about is those guys and uh, for me unrealistic expectations is the biggest uh, avenue to failure and uh, I don't want to place that burden on anyone I want these guys to to grow and uh, learn and work hard and uh, they'll get a chance to to perform out in the spring let's uh, go to Jake row and then we'll go to zach klein uh kirby you guys lost some significant pieces after last season in the defensive backfield three cornerbacks a couple nickel guys and tyreek stevenson transferring um kind of what what are some like maybe some of your preliminary plans about guys that you you know you want to see get going at that position some of your older guys and and where does the portal maybe factor into that, uh, it, recruiting out of the portal and things like that? Well, I think number one thing is secondary is a development position too, especially for us. When you look at it across the board, uh, the number of players we've had uh, play as freshmen uh, have been few and far between when it comes to uh, defensive backs. There's certainly been role players, um, but not many guys that just step in and go play. So. Uh, it's a position we have to develop. We've got some guys we've been developing for a while that'll need to step up and play. Um, we've also got some young players that we just signed, we just talked about, that'll have to grow quickly and uh, we'll get an opportunity to compete for uh, positions. We've certainly got availability at that that spot. And uh, we've known that was coming for a long time uh, because we had some talented players that we knew were gonna have the ability to leave as juniors. So uh, these young guys will, will begin to work. Some of the older guys that got to play in the bowl game more than normal, they're going to get a lot of opportunities. And uh, we're going to try to develop these guys and, and, and get ready to play. I mean, the best, the best help for that secondary will be the front four, uh, getting, getting some pressure and being able to rush. So that'll be just as important um, as anything else we do. Apologies to everybody else, but I just wanted to also follow up with that. Jamal Adai. The, the hiring of him, how big of a factor was it that he has had experience basically dealing with so much turnover in the secondary and what happened with him last year at West Virginia and the way he developed those cornerbacks and, and turned them into a really good pass defense? 
I mean, to be honest with you, absolutely nothing. I mean, I, I didn't go and study and say, I mean, I had no idea until you guys wrote that. I, I based the decision on the fit, um, the person, the man, the research, the interview. I'm not really into, you know, how many stars did he lose? What was their, uh, you know, passer rating? What was their defensive pass percentages? Because uh, that, that's not – to be honest, it's not relevant because you're dealing with two different conferences that didn't cross over conferences. So for us, we base the decision on the fit. Um, and I'm excited about Jamal because I think he's very talented. Uh, I think he's got a great personality. I think he's going to make a really good recruiter. I think he's a really good teacher. And getting to visit with him um, and then and since hiring him, getting to spend a lot of time with him, I'm excited about what he can do. But as far as what he inherited or had go or came in, I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't have any clue. Kirby, I know you pride so much on hosting guys and showing what Athens has to offer when it comes to recruiting to other places. Have you been given any indication uh, or hopeful that, you know, come April, May, you'd be able to host guys uh, on campus? And does any part of you, going back to you've been forced to handle this recruiting in a, in a COVID world, do you feel more recharged because you weren't working 20 hours a day on the road um, that you have every other year leading up to this from a physical and just mental clarity standpoint? Yeah, I would say that the travel aspect has taken the, that, that part out. I mean, I enjoy going to the high schools. I enjoy going to the basketball games. I enjoy promoting our game and our sport. I don't look at that as, uh, as taxing uh, because if you're not doing that, you're doing something else. I mean, it's not like it, it ever stops. I, I've probably been more involved with uh, my family, my kids, my, my players, our, our team here with their activities after hours than normal because I haven't been on the road at basketball games, in-home visits and doing all those things that you would uh, typically do in a January um, uh, time period. But uh, as far as us getting kids back on campus, that's up to the NCAA and, you know, they, they pushed it back several times and, uh, you know, we'll find out shortly here if they push this date back that we currently have. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting guys back because I want to find out more about them as men um, when they come to campus, get to know their family, um, have them get around our players so that you can uh, feel comfortable about the guys you're bringing in. Yep. Let's go to Augusta Stone with the red and black, and then uh, we'll go to David Pascal. Hey, Kirby, you mentioned this a bit earlier, but I kind of want to know if you can say um, who were some of the people that you hadn't met before they enrolled on campus, went to classes, and what have you heard that helped them, you know, kind of get them here without that in-person interaction during the process? I, well, I met them all by Zoom, you know, uh, obviously. Yes. I mean, in person. <laughs> yeah, in person, uh, a lot of them, you know, we weren't able to get to see all these guys. I mean, looking down the list, they didn't get to come to games this year. So we didn't get to uh, sit down and visit with several of them. But uh, we're excited about them. And it's just different because the official visit, you feel like you get to know their families, so many things about them. We didn't get to do that. Now, as far as time on the phone and uh, time on Zoom is a lot. What was the second part of your question? The adjustment to them coming? Well, what do you think made them, made them come? You know, when you don't get to get that atmosphere, what convinced them, do you think? Well, I think those same selling pieces. Number one, uh, uh, wonderful education. And we've got a really stellar class in terms of academics. So this class bought into the fact that they're going to one of the top uh, 20 public institutions in the country. So that that was a key ingredient, the the fact that we've got an opportunity to, to be successful. I mean, they see the support. They see what uh, our program has been able to do from a facility standpoint. So they, they, they want to be a part of that. Um, they want to align themselves with that. And well, we had a lot more kids from our, our own state, you know, from our in-state kids that uh, I know uh, Georgia means a lot to them. And they watched Georgia growing up being successful and they want to be part of that. So I think that was probably the number one factor because they, they couldn't factor it on visits. They couldn't factor it on going to games. They had to do it on, on what they, uh, what they knew and understood. Thank you. Kirby, when you go back to your time as like the running, when you were running backs coach, you remember that this day Claude used to have coffee and donuts for everybody and, and how Buttsmere used to be absolutely packed. Like you said, at the very top, it's basically become a non-existent day. Do you see that? continuing and what would you change about the recruiting schedule moving forward if you could well I don't see this changing I see it only moving up more and more because more and more kids want to go mid-year they want to start their college education and get an opportunity to and COVID only accelerated that because they didn't have the opportunity to play spring sports um, in a lot of cases so I don't foresee that changing uh, in terms of timing of things uh, it's tough, 
for us because you're making decisions blindly. You don't know who's coming back, who's not, uh, and those decisions aren't made. And I think those decisions for guys are in the right timeline. But unfortunately, our early signing period uh, prevents us from getting that information. So it's two different uh, dates that aren't aligned, and it's really hard just to fix that. I mean, you'd say the way to fix it is push back signing date until after the junior declare date, but then you're right back to where we were before. And a lot of kids um, want to be able to early sign and take the pressure off of January and February. So you're not going to make everything happy or cohesive with either one. All right, let's go to Connor Riley and then Roddy Nabolsi. With more and more kids signing in December, has that sort of changed how you go ahead and start recruiting that next class, in this case, the, the 2022 recruiting class, in terms of putting more of an effort and emphasis on recruiting those guys, especially in the month of January? I wouldn't say more. I would say it's always been that way, right? I mean, you've always, I've always seen January as a chance to jump ahead on those other guys. Uh, we just have a little more time now because you're on less 2021 kids in January of, uh, of, of 2021, because your, your class is pretty much done. So we've always put a big emphasis on that next class. Uh, that hasn't changed. It probably just seems to be that way. And I think those kids are probably making earlier decisions um, with the outlook that they may not get visits. They may not get an opportunity to go places and do things. Kirby, uh, do you have the dates set for spring camp and G-Day? And do you have any G-Day plans? And also, uh, can you give us your thoughts on Josh Brooks taking over as AD? Yeah, uh, April 17th is slated to be G-Day. We don't have exact times and uh, uh, you know, whether television is going to be involved in that and what our attendance policies are going to be. But we do have the date. Um, and that date would be April 17th, as well as our spring dates uh, of our 15 practices. So that part set, we're always flexible in our uh, practice dates based on weather or things that may change. But the G day date is uh, pretty solid for us there. Uh, and then as far as Josh Brooks, you know, I'm excited to work with Josh. I've known Josh for a long time. Uh, he's worked really hard for this opportunity. I know he's excited. Um, I'm excited about working with him and his staff upstairs does a tremendous job. I think uh, Greg did a great job um, leaving the situation. Uh, in, in great shape and he's got a really good senior support staff in which he works with and I think he's surrounded himself with a lot of good people so we're looking forward to uh, working with all those guys. And right, we got time for two more questions and uh, we'll just open it up anyone two more. Hey coach I wanted to touch on uh, Javon Bullard as an early enrollee um, is he a guy you know watching his film and stuff like that he's played he aligned to some safety some of course he played corner a playmaker on both sides of the ball for Baldwin. Is he a guy that could fit in multiple roles maybe in his future at Georgia? Uh, yeah, we're excited about uh, Javon and he's a bright kid, uh, great family and looking forward to seeing him work and uh, certainly going to be some opportunities in the defensive backfield and um, we're going to find out more about him to see exactly where he's going to start um, to start off whether that's corner, safety star, nickel, money, um, one of our different positions. Uh, but we're excited about the things he brings to the table. Coach, are you expecting any signings today? Um, that's one of those that, to be honest with you, Chip, we may get one, we may not, and uh, only time will tell. But uh, there's several guys that we've been in communication with, and uh, when it comes to that, that's something that uh, happens when it happens because we're not really allowed to comment on it. What do you like in the Super Bowl? You know what? I, I just want to stay close. I want a good game. I uh, uh, really want Miko. Um, to get an opportunity to uh, get that second ring. Um, got a lot of friends, and Bruce and I have been friends for a long time, Arians, and uh, excited to see those guys play uh, at Tampa. But I'm not really pulling for either team. I am pulling for a good, exciting game is what I always like to watch. Thank you, Coach Smart. Thanks, everyone, for calling in. Everyone have a great day. Appreciate the opportunity.